Guys, welcome back to the VoiceOvers Podcast. I'm 24K Logan. Can't run I'm going to get straight into it about this whole situation with J. Cole apologizing. Just so y'all know, we were at Dreamville Fest. We were live, or we saw J. Cole live in concert making this statement. All I'm going to say is, regardless, you know, if you're a huge J. Cole fan or if you're just a casual What he said does not tarnish his legacy. There's plenty of artists that have said and done a lot worse than this. I mean, the guy is always going to be a spiritual person. He's always been a spiritual person and he's in tune with himself. You can't knock a man for trying to be in tune with himself. I do understand, you know, the standpoint of view saying that it's kind of conflicting that J. Cole has been saying all these things like, you know, him feeling like Muhammad Ali and whatnot. And of course, the seven minute drill response to Kendrick's verse on like that. But at the end of the day, the man is it's like he's choosing between sticking to his moral compass or sticking to himself versus succumbing to anything else or whatever else the casuals want him to say or the trap that they want him to fall into i do understand that there was nothing disrespectful said towards j cole or even drake you know it was strictly about the music and the discographies and whatnot um but at the end of the day this does not tarnish j cole's legacy i still have him amongst the big three of hip-hop that's a no-brainer people were saying that it's now Kendrick, Drake, and Future, that Cole is out of there, that's bullshit if you ask me, just to be quite frank. I stand with Cole. I support him. Um, If y'all want to say that Kendrick won this round of the beef, the battle or whatever, so be it. Um, You can tell by Cole's energy in the seven-minute drill while... He said some things that got a lot of people talking, whether you agree or disagree with it. You know, he he did his thing or whatever, but you can tell that his heart wasn't really in it. Um, And this was more of a warning shot than a diss. Clearly, he still has a a lot of love for Kendrick Lamar. All right. So when we was at the thing, he was talking about the song Love Yours. And he talked about 10 years ago. He explained why he actually made that song. And he finally explained it. It's crazy how he witnessed that live. So... So he talked about how he got close with God, especially these past 10 years. So when he talked about that, I instantly knew where he was going with this. Because if you read Genesis to Revelations, you you would understand why he felt the way he felt. And he said something bothered him. And, you know, God wouldn't call you to tear down someone. He calls you to uplift someone, you know, uh, say what helps people, uplifting others. So obviously he felt some kind of way tarnishing down uh, one of the greatest rappers ever, but also, at one point, a very good friend of his who he actually fought for at one point, if you know that story. and Exactly. And I like how you mentioned him, uh, how everybody's talking about he said he was the best. Ironically, he has a song called Pride is the Devil, and in that song, he says he thinks it has a hold on him. So, obviously, he feels some kind of way about showing off, and maybe, like how he said... His friends looked at him like, what you going to do? And that's really the story of why he said what he said and did what he did. But obviously he feels terrible about it. You know, there's those moments where you want to, where you want to, I guess, say your mind or be who you want to be. Or just like, yo, I don't care what anybody says. This is how I feel. Since y'all feel this way, here's my thoughts on it. But then again, it's like, ah, I shouldn't have said that, you know. Because I bet he feels bad. Because like like how we said in the last video, um, I don't think his discography is trash at all. Like nothing's bad about either discography. But obviously, he knew that he knew that nothing was bad about it. Yet, you see what I'm saying? That's what, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like it's almost like he succumbed to what the fans or some of the casual fans believe. Like, let's be real. When you play to Pimp a Butterfly, yeah, it's not the first album that you want to play over and over again on a car ride or whatever. But when you really look into the artistic creativity of that album and the message and you listen to a song like all right to pimp a butterfly did what kendrick lamar wanted to do for the album it served its purpose or the purpose that he you know basically had it meant for um i don't think it's a 
Bull Ring album. It might not be the most replayable album, but I mean, from an artistic and creative level, it is one of the greatest albums of all time. But, you know, it, this whole thing, okay, it's not like Cole started this whole situation. If we're being honest, nothing but love and respect for Kendrick Lamar as an artist and as a person. But if we're being honest, he was the one that dropped the light that verse. That's a no brainer. He dropped that verse. He didn't necessarily come directly at Cole, but for him to say, motherfuck the big three, it's just big me. It's okay to have confidence and believe in yourself and whatnot. But he did basically exclude Drake and Cole. Yes, not just Drake, but J. Cole's will. He excluded both of them from you know his lane, his tier. And basically said, fuck them. Now, I don't think he meant it in a disrespectful way, but that's what he said. And a lot of people are calling Cole soft, calling him a, a punk. I've seen in comment sessions, I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Like, how can you, even if he apologized, which I don't, I wouldn't say this is, I think this is more of an apology to his fans than Kendrick himself. But even if he did apologize, what he said can't necessarily be taken back so it's not like Cole didn't give a response I think a lot of people's issue is that he didn't give it enough time you know to breathe um he didn't wait till after the fall off to drop the apology um or whatever the case may be you know but I mean he literally said towards the end of that speech he expects Kendrick to give him his best shot and that he has his chin is but it's not like he's taking it and tucking his tail between his legs he's sticking to his roots and who he really is as an artist another part of the speech he specifically said that he felt that he was going back to where he was 10 years ago or something like that you know when he was moving what he felt was him moving in the wrong direction or moving the wrong way so you can't knock a man for trying to be at peace with himself or you know be who he really is Cole is still a hell of a fucking rapper one of the greatest to ever do it I think we both still have him amongst the 10 greatest rappers of all time that was and we'll debate this with anybody any day whatever but overall, that's our thoughts and opinions on this. Y'all comment down below what y'all think about this whole situation. I know you have some fans that stand with Cole. You have some fans that completely disagree with it. It is what it is. But we appreciate everybody for tuning in um, and showing all the love and support. We enjoyed our time at Dreamville Fest. J. Cole, if you're watching this, we stand with you, brother. Much love and respect. But until next time, peace and love to everybody.